that now this calling is. You know, interestingly enough, um, I have now two doctorate degrees and four master's degrees. How do I, how do I, how did I get here? You know, with, with all of that baggage and all of that past and all of that self doubt. Well, once you understand the, what people may see as deficiencies, now I can deal with it. Now I can say to myself, until I change the way I look at things, the things that I look at will never change. Yes, my friend may have to study 30 minutes and he gets an A. I may have to study, which is true, three to four hours and I still get a C. But you have to find a way, I and mean, we call it in the academic world, uh, self, uh, efficacy and self-esteem and, and locus of control. You have to realize that God gives people different gifts and that may not be my gift to be an A student. That may not be my gift to walk around with honor cards, uh, cards on my uh, regalia. But my gift is could, could be the, the, the gift of persistence, the gift of hard work, the gift of showing people no matter where you come from. All you have to do is change your mindset until you can get to where you're going. Now, this story that I'm telling you is a real life story. I couldn't get into a master's program because I had a 2.48 from college. So when I got into a master's program, I had to take three remedial courses before I can even get into a master's program. In those three courses, I probably had the lowest B that anybody could have. But in my mind, it was progress. Okay, and so once I got into uh, the program after being on re in remedial classes, I actually had graduated my first master's degree with a 3.0. Bottom line, solid 3.0, but in my mind, it was progress. However, because I didn't feel that it was good enough, I just started a second master's program. I took all of my extra money and I got in a second master's program to ensure that I could be better than the first master's program. Interestingly enough, I got a 3.0 for my second master's program. But uh, in that program, you know, the, 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 the quote here is saying, until you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at will never change. My mindset was changing because I understood and I was understanding who I was at that point. I was understanding that I may never be number one. But that doesn't mean that I can't be in the game. I may never be the best in the world. I may never be the most scholarly. I may never write, you know, some some op ed in the New York Times. But I understood that I could have given up a long time ago. I could have given up when I had those thoughts of suicide in my head. I could have given up. So your mindset is exponentially uh, essential in the way you deal with life and the way you deal with problems. My uh, PhD, I enrolled after my second master's, I enrolled, I was convinced by a friend to go into the PhD program. Again, with a lot of self-doubt, a lot of uh, toiling over uh, whether I was going to be exposed as a mediocre person, a mediocre writer, and I Got into the PD, PH, PD, excuse me, PhD program, and I studied all night. Uh, I said I was going to dedicate myself. I could never. I mean, if you go back through my, my, my records, I could never get over this baseline score. So I finally uh, got through the uh, PhD, at least the academic portion, and I had to find a way to now to write this overriding theoretical document called uh, the dissertation. Well, I did that for about two years, and I came to a point. I said, that's it. It's over. I'm not doing this. I'm not smart enough. I can't not achieve this. Something interesting happened. I was in Baghdad, uh, Iraq. I was deployed at, at, at the time. And I had already made up in my mind, that's it, I'm going to quit, um, I'm good, I achieved enough in life uh, as far as academics. And f nine of my soldiers were killed uh, in a helicopter uh, accident. And I had, I got a quote um, uh, some years ago, and it popped in my head immediately. 
It said that most people die at 25, but they're not buried until they're 75. And it kept ringing in my head. And what that quote means is most of us give up on our hopes and dreams in life for this thing, this, this mythological thing called reality. I decided that what is it going to hurt? We live, we die. If I left this earth not trying to do my best, I don't think I would be able to live with myself. So I tried. I called my dissertation chair and I told her I wanted back into the PhD program. I wanted uh, back in to start writing my dissertation. Interestingly enough, when you start to open yourself up, this wonderful woman, she said, call it. I was waiting for your call. I will do everything in my power to ensure that you get your PhD. And so she worked with me hand in hand and she worked with me more than she worked uh, uh, with others because she knew I had a seemingly uh, deficiency. And I told her that I was going to give my all. And if I had to stay up all night, which I did, I was going to get those theories. I was going to get those concepts. I was going to build those constructs uh, to ensure that I got my Ph.D. I had promised my mother, my father, and my grandfather that I was going to be an educated man, and I intended to stick to that promise. I defended my dissertation in Baghdad over a, a, a VTC. Bombs going off and all kind of stuff happening, which was kind of you know, metaphorical or kind of salient to who, what my life was. It was a life of chaos. And I defended my dissertation. They, they went back into the room in 30 minutes, and they came out and called me Dr. Shabazz, and I cried for two days. <laughs> I hope and pray this has helped somebody. Uh, until you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at will never change.